podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV. LabCorp, which currently employs around 31,000 employees, has its headquarters in Burlington. I recently talked with CEO David King about the major trends impacting the company. David King, welcome to North Carolina Now. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. You are the CEO of LabCorp, and there are probably many people in North Carolina who have heard the name of your company, but they might not be familiar with everything that you do. So first of all, how do you describe the work of LabCorp? We're a clinical laboratory company. Um, the primary work that we do is um, routine laboratory work, such as when you go to your doctor for a physical and your doctor would like to know what your white blood cell count is or your cholesterol. But we also do a wide variety of tests beyond routine uh, blood chemistry tests. So we actually offer 4,400 uh, different tests, ranging in everything from, as I mentioned, routine blood chemistry and cholesterol testing, all the way up to the most sophisticated uh, toxicology analysis, DNA analysis, uh, analysis of uh, cancer and uh, tumor cells. Uh, so we, we run the spectrum of um, all laboratory diagnostic testing. And the way we think of ourselves in the healthcare system is that laboratory testing, although it only accounts for about 3% of the total spend uh, on healthcare, informs or helps doctors make 70% of their clinical decisions. So it's very common when you go to the doctor and you get examined, whether you're feeling well or whether you're feeling sick, the doctor will order some lab testing and say, well, I'd like to see what the labs say. I think we play a very important and central role in the healthcare system uh, and provide great value to our patients and our physician customers. The company is headquartered in Burlington, but you have laboratories throughout the nation and beyond. How many laboratories are part of your network now and how many employees do you have? We employ uh, almost 31,000 people, um, almost all of them in the United States, although we do have uh, a small um, part of our business that has operations in Europe, um, China, and Singapore. And we actually have a quite large operation, about 5% of our uh, revenue comes from our Canadian business. Um, we have about 35 major testing centers around the U.S., and when I say major, I mean quite sizable. We have hundreds of smaller testing centers where we'll do uh, two-hour stat testing or what we call day testing, where it needs to be back to the doctor the next day. Um, but we have a, an extensive network, and that's supported by approximately 1,700 patient service centers where people can go to have their blood drawn so that we can start the process of doing the testing. Um, about uh, 5,000 courier cars, seven aircraft. So we, we run the whole range of logistics to move the blood from place to place, get the specimens tested, and return the results to your physician uh, so that that can inform care. You have been with the company since 2001. You have been at CEO since 2007. During that time, how have you seen LabCorp grow and change? The um, company has been very successful because of the dedication of our employees. And one of the things that is most fundamental for us to remember um, is that there are many components to our business. So somebody needs to draw the blood. This is a difficult job and not always the most pleasant one. If you've ever had your blood drawn, some people it's easy to draw blood. I happen to have great veins. Other people don't have great veins. And so our phlebotomists who draw the blood do a terrific job. Our couriers who pick up the samples and move them around, our lab technicians, our accessioners, our IT people. It's a huge IT operation that supports um, getting the results out electronically to, to our uh, customers. Um, our physicians and PhDs, we employ perhaps, probably 400 uh, doctors and PhDs who help interpret the results, authorize their release, and assist physicians with interpreting them. I think what I've probably seen uh, change the most, besides the growth of the company through some of our acquisitions and some of our managed care contracts is the technology behind the testing has changed very dramatically. So it wasn't that many years ago that we had huge instruments, you know, the size of three of those windows to run 12 chemistry tests. Now we run tests on the size of this tabletop and we can run 30 or 40 chemistry tests using that same instrument. So the technology is becoming better and better. Uh, the throughput is becoming higher and higher. 
We're looking at all sorts of things like next generation sequencing for genetic testing, which will give us a much broader view of your genes when you, when you want to know from a reproductive perspective or from a cancer perspective, um, what do the genetics of disease have to do with your particular condition or your likelihood of having a baby that is going to, is going to have uh, genetically inherited conditions. Um, so it's been, it's been a great increase in size through acquisitions and growth and also a great step up in the business because of the technological advancements. Over the last couple of years, both the state and the national economies have faced downturns. How has that impacted LabCorp? Well, I'm proud to say that uh, in spite of the economic downturn, we have continued to add jobs both in North Carolina um, and throughout the U.S. Uh, we haven't outsourced any jobs overseas. Um, we've continued to um, give our employees uh, merit raises uh, as well as make their 401k contributions. So, we feel this is very important. The company, we're fortunate. The company is profitable, uh, but it's profitable because of the, the people who work on the front line. Um, from a testing perspective, obviously, as people have worried about the economy, they've worried about um, whether they're going to continue to have a job. Many people, unfortunately, have lost their jobs. Um, this has had a somewhat negative impact because people are not going to the doctor as much if they don't go to the doctor, they're not getting as much lab testing. So, um, so there's been a somewhat downward trend in volume, or the, although our volume has continued to grow. Um, but you know, we view this as a short-term uh, situation. Uh, we have confidence that ultimately, as the economy recovers, the the volume will recover. And in the meantime, we've tried to run the business in a very cautious and conservative way, so that we can continue to fulfill our mission. What are some of the trends that you're currently keeping a very close eye on that are going to impact LabCorp over the next couple of years and that will also be making headlines that the rest of us are going to be reading about? Well, one trend is that um, the Food and Drug Administration has become much more interested in the regulation of uh, laboratory testing. And um, while we are um, extremely supportive of responsible regulation, and of the need to provide high quality reliable testing. Um, we also worry that excessive involvement by the government in the day-to-day -day business of laboratory testing is actually going to be harmful to innovation, it's going to be harmful to information that doctors need, and ultimately it's, it's going to not be beneficial to patient care. So that's a trend that we watch um, with concern and obviously we're, we're very uh, active in letting the FDA know our views. We certainly, uh, like everybody else, um, are concerned about uh, the, the seemingly uh, unceasing um, desire to reduce Medicare payments to providers. Um, and so this is, a, this is a, obviously we have a financial situation in our country that needs to be addressed. And at the same time, we have to remember that you know, most um, providers have not seen and particularly in the lab industry, we have not seen real dollar increases uh, from Medicare. In fact, in the last 11 years, we've seen about a 29% real dollar inflation adjusted decrease in what we get paid. So, uh, so this is a, a trend that, that we also um, watch with interest. And then I would say on the positive side, um, I think doctors are understanding the use of laboratory tests much better. We're bringing out better and better testing that we can use to help um, inform treatment decisions. A recent example is um, you may have read about the um, drug that Roche introduced um, for uh, advanced melanoma. And this drug, um, which is an expensive drug, it works specifically for patients who have a particular mutation of the BRAF gene. But well, we have a test available now. It costs less than $150 to identify that mutation so we can say with great certainty who will benefit from the test and what patients, unfortunately, will not benefit from the test. This is terrific because it allows us to administer the right drug to the right patient at the right time and not administer expensive drugs to patients who they won't work for. So that, that to me, is a, is a very positive trend, the increasing individualization of medicine and, as I mentioned before, knowing more about the genetics of disease and the genetics of treatment. 
David King, thank you so much for sharing all of this information with us. Thank you. It's great being with you. Podcasts on unctv.org are made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you who invite you to join them in supporting UNCTV.